Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Alex Viscrano. Uh, I'm working as a full stack developer in the platform team for Kiwi.com. Uh, most, pro most probably you all know what platform engineering is about, but uh, for those of you who don't, uh, we provide the building blocks to all our developers so they can just not think that much about uh, how to set up something or how to deploy something, but they can just focus on the business logic. You can find me in Slack everywhere. So. so what is all this about? Uh, I will just make a, a small introduction about how Kiwi started in uh, infrastructure-wise and how we deployed code at the beginning. What made us change? Uh, switching from uh, data center to uh, cloud-based and then to cloud-native, it's a pretty big change and we have to have good reason for doing so. Why did we choose cloud-native technologies and how did we get there? Some small background about Kiwi.com. Uh, we are an online travel agency, so we sell flight tickets. Uh, the main idea that people get usually from uh, when I'm saying that we sell tickets is, yeah, meta search engine. Uh, not really. We actually own the tickets, which allows us to do pretty cool stuff. Our main feature is uh, virtual interacting. So we connect flights from carriers that don't cooperate together usually, and we are the ones covering uh, the, the transport. But at the end, this is all meant to just justify that we didn't really need any special architecture. Uh, just a database, something that will index those flights so it will allow us to search, and that's pretty much it. Everything was running kind of like always on all the startups. A uh, single server, everything was running in the same place. If it went down, well, everything was down. Uh, of course, we didn't really want to manage databases, uh, paid someone to manage databases, so we self-hosted them. Uh, we didn't have any orchestration at all. There was no deployment pipeline, more than just some guy SSH into the, the server and pulling the new code and reloading. Uh, and of course, isolation was something that we just could dream of. So of course, that didn't last for too long. Uh, after having to upscale our databases like three, four, five times, and every time we will bump into newer issues because we were ingesting more and more flights. Uh, search searching was more complicated because of the same thing. We have more data to search over. Uh, Elasticsearch didn't really do the trick for us, so we just needed to change. And uh, we headed to something that uh, using like buzzword stuff, uh, it's microservices. And all the important part here is that all this transition happened naturally. We didn't have to really impose people to just switch to this architecture, people really needed those features. People wanted to have a single place where they could run their code without having to mix it with something else. They didn't want to run in the same server as a database and whenever the application would uh, use all the CPU, have the database down. People wanted isolation, people wanted a easy to deploy pipeline, people wanted all these features. So what would we do? Uh, we split the responsibility of how the deployment was done to the teams themselves. Um, basically, as long as you know how to run it, like up to you. Uh, we started leveraging uh, platform as a service and infrastructure as a service. Uh, almost every product that Amazon offers, we used them or we at least tried it. Uh, of course, that increased isolation. Uh, at least on the beginning, we didn't have a single server with everything running, but at least we had some VMs running in some specific places, which is already a layer. And that's when we kind of switched to GitLab from GitHub, uh, and finally we could have proper CICD. This is our current still uh, and best combo. We moved almost everything to Docker. We used GitLab as a main operations platform for as much as we can, and we deployed everything in Rancher, uh, Rancher 1.6, so not Kubernetes. And this has worked so far so good. Really, it worked awesomely for four years. But we needed to change. And that's why we are bigger and bigger every time. And Rancher, it's not really, it was never probably designed to be managing as many nodes as we had. So we hit issues. Uh, 
and not only issues in the deployment itself, but also uh, features that we couldn't have. Autoscaling, uh, it's not granular enough. Uh, you cannot autoscale like with Kubernetes. You have to have an autoscaling group in Amazon, and then of course you can have ranchers setting up a specific amount of containers per node, but that's not really based on much more than what Amazon can provide. Rancher 1.6 is not really being developed anymore. It's just small patches and small fixes. Uh, and everyone has Kubernetes, so why don't we? Uh, and also the community. Uh, there are every single day at least probably five new tools doing something in Kubernetes. Most of them are overlapping with previous tools, but still it's a steady flow of new features coming uh, from literally everyone in the world. We have huge companies using Kubernetes, and whenever they face an issue, uh, they provide some tooling usually, uh, and that kind of has some question for us, when we will reach that point, we know that there's already people doing this, so we can learn from, from them. So yeah, we started to move somewhere else, in this case, cloud native land. And this time, it wasn't natural. Uh, people was really comfortable with our previous setup. Uh, actually, as there was no easy way for deploying from GitLab to Rancher, we built an open source tool for, for that. Um, Everyone was really happy. They had just had like click button to deploy to Canary, deploy to production, and it, everything was fine. Uh, people liked to click on the Rancher UI to add hosts. They were fine with that. They didn't care about not having that configuration stored anywhere. Uh, so this was harder to move. Uh, it was harder to justify to people that, hey, you should move because it's better. So this is our current setup for anything new that we're launching, and we are migrating most of our stuff to this setup as well. We are still leveraging Docker, Docker images. Everything has its own container. Everything should be run isolated. Uh, we still use GitLab. Everything is fine there. And we switched Rancher for Kubernetes. And we are not really considering this as a huge success. We are getting there. So why is not that easy for us? Uh, for that, we have to explain our baggage. What, where did we start from? And the truth is we had hundreds of containerized Python apps that uh, were never really thought of running in some huge Kubernetes cluster where they have access to virtually unlimited resources. So decisions made during the development time were not really that good for deploying in cloud native stuff. As I said, developers were used to Rancher UI. They really didn't want to uh, bother with anything. They were just used to click on the UI and get a new node. Uh, there was no com uh, configuration rules. Uh, everything was ad hoc. People who wanted something, they got it. But also uh, that um, caused a huge upload for us. Every time there was an issue with some DNS, some host being uh, tricky or whatever, they would just ping our DevOps team and asking for help. So we needed to enforce some sanity company-wise. Uh, the good thing we have is that most of our code base is Python, and they are most of it using the same approach. So it's kind of easy for us to uh, define some standards and enforce them. Uh, and again, we have also collaborators from the other languages like that we use, like JavaScript or C++, and we try to come up with these standards per uh, technology. And what did we do for all this? Uh, the main thing is code templates. Right now, if you want to start a new microservice, we provide templates for you. You just init one of them, fill up your information, and boom, you get a server running. Uh, and it's everything considered best, best practices, the tools we want you to use, CI already set up, it's perfect. We provide infrastructure templates. Uh, we don't want people to have to figure out how to uh, terraform something every time, so we just provide as much as we can, ready to use. CI CD templates. Uh, having similar setup, as I explained, being most of the code base Python, allows us to have some shared images and shared uh, CI jobs that are just plug and play. You just include them in your CI template and you get static analysis, security uh, analysis, everything for free. You don't have to do anything. Customization. Uh, from the beginning, we did, wanted to go tillerless in the, in the cluster. So we use Customize almost everywhere. So we provo provide remote bases for 
you again not having to define your ingresses or define uh, I don't know data log agent or anything else. Uh, and we even provide automatic monitoring. As I explained, we have shared CI jobs, for example, the deploy to cluster. Uh, and in that job, we also added some cool stuff there that, for example, uh, creates a dat data log dashboard with all the information about every workload you have in the cluster. So you can have right sizing information, anomaly detection, everything is for free. You just run that job and you automatically get it. And yeah, Terraform everything. Uh, Terraform is literally what is saving us for uh, having, not having to develop all this stuff. And we try to use it as much as we can. So I just have some examples here. Uh, as I explained, we Terraform everything. So uh, when someone wants a new Google Cloud project, you can just use Terraform. And this will automatically send you a Slack message with all the information about uh, where your uh, where your cluster is located, and even uh, that code snippet that will automatically uh, generate the, all the source files uh, for you to just push to GitLab and have it running. We also generate a readme with all the resources uh, explained and how they are used and where they located. Everything is as clear as, as possible. And we generate uh, default resources for everything. We generate a uh, vault path, with uh, some common secrets that we have. We generate, uh, let's encrypt certificates for everything to be uh, working, generate DNS records, everything is ready only by using that Terraform module. Uh, Kubernetes namespaces. Again, we wanted to have some, some uh, common play, uh, way to define a, a namespace, and again, we use Terraform. In this case, uh, it will automatically inject an operator to your cluster, make, being sure that the secrets are synced from Vault all the time. You get a data log integration, so all the logs are shipped automatically. You get uh, monitoring, everything is set up for you. Uh, we even Terraform GitLab users, uh, as there is no easy way for having bot users in GitLab right now. Uh, we just decided to, let's have a Terraform where we can have a source of truth of these extra users that are not uh, in our sign, uh, single sign-in. Uh, they are in this repository and everything is there. Everything can be only removed by that. Serverless, we use plenty of serverless in GIVI and uh, we use, again, uh, Terraform. We have Lambda modules ready for you to be deployed. They have the minimum set of permissions needed to just deploy a serverless function. Uh, we consider all the features that people need, usually step functions, uh, DynamoDB, everything that it's there, and everything is ready and configured automatically. So you just create your module, point to the proper uh, GitLab uh, project, and we will automatically fill all the CI/CD secrets, and we will prepare everything on uh, CloudFormation. DNS records, same story. Just create a Terraform module and you got a DNS record, everything is ready for you. And we use Terraform for, again, as much as we can. We Terraform our Bingham checks, we Terraform our Vault path, everything in Amazon is also Terraformed, Google, all, all the new code is Terraformed. And we even authored uh, some providers. When we couldn't find any for Cloud Passage Hello, we just decided to make it, it's open source, everyone can use it. And yes, everything that is right now being deployed has to be infrastructure as code. That brings us many advantages. We don't have to be guessing how something is configured or mm, wanting to change something because there was any issue, some leak, and not being able to know even where uh, that thing is deployed. Actually, this is our GitLab deployment pipeline, which we use to deploy GitLab from GitLab itself. And actually, we can just deploy any version of GitLab in three minutes. Uh, that's awesome. And these are the main advantages we got from all this. Uh, single source of truth. Again, we don't have to guess anything. Whenever you want to know something, you go to GitLab, search for it, you will find the Terraform definitions, and that should be the what is applied. All the changes are kept in history. Again, uh, if something went wrong, easy to revert commit or to just know 
uh, why was it done, and ask the person who did it, uh, because maybe there was some mistake. Uh, all the changes are reviewed, so also a good thing there. Uh, it's also easy to deploy changes that affect all the infrastructure. Uh, having all these centralized uh, templates and uh, points of uh, source of truth for all this stuff allows us, for example, to ro rotate uh, our vault configuration across all our infrastructure repositories with a single change. Uh, we use centralized security management. Vault, uh, it's used everywhere except for GitLab CI, which will be also used, be used there soon. And also centralized network man management. We have a specific project that only hosts Terraform definitions for how our, our network is defined. So everything there, ev everything it's uh, easy to use. We have just VPCs defined there. Everyone can just use them. And whenever there is a need for a big change, it's easy to review it properly and also make sure that it's not affecting the, the other resources. And that's it from my side. Thanks, everyone.